Welcome everybody to the Monday, February 12th meeting of the Conway Select Board um, at 6.30 p.m. It will become the joint meeting of the Select Board and Finance Committee. And uh, the meeting is being recorded live on FCAT and on uh, Zoom. On the, uh, and when, if for any reason the recordings do not work, the meeting will continue live. So I will call the meeting to order. First item, vote to approve the minutes of January 29 and February 5. I looked both over, did not see any errors. I will make a motion to approve both meeting minutes. I'll second uh, that. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Next is warrants. There are three warrants. I'll go with the two that I don't have any problem with. The payroll warrant in the amount of $136,227.32. The payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $33,880.01. Those are both really standard, mostly school and payroll um, uh, and insurances and whatnot. Um, so those two, I'll make the motion that we approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The third warrant is the vote to approve the accounts payable warrant in the amount of $158,992.42. Because that warrant includes a proposed payment of $2,000. $170 for the rental of a dually pickup truck, which may or may not be an unlawful attempt to circumvent the will of town meeting, which voted down the purchase of a dually pickup truck um, based on advice of council. I am declining to, to, to sign for that. Um, and that, that matter is the subject of an ongoing investigation. That's all I'm going to say about that. And it, may become appropriate to sign for it later, but right now I'm not signing. So if either one of you wants to make a motion to sign it, that's on you. <coughs> and we don't have the, the leverage, I mean, there's no way for us to say that we'll pay everything but that one particular invoice. I mean, if we sign the warrants, it's we actually like, can it. do. We actually can do that. <coughs> we actually can do that. And that's probably a much more appropriate thing to do. Um, if the payment's not made, are we going to develop, or are we going to incur any late fees, um, or um, interest? Um, I can't say no to that. I can't say yes to that. I'll just say I don't know. But I do. All I know is that I can't sign that right now. It, although it may become appropriate to sign that shortly but it's not right now for me so and that's I, I don't know I, that's I don't know if you've spoken to town council about that but I have so I have only seen communication on the need for the vehicle I, a question for you Veronique I don't know if you can answer are we able to make a motion to sign everything's minus that until it's under investigation I, you can, I don't know what the legal mechanism is, to be perfectly frank. Um, I don't know about withholding payment. I would, maybe you could check with town council about that. And um, can we get a copy of the lease agreement in the next couple days? I think we have it. The rental agreement? Okay, I haven't seen it yet. Hmm. Yes, we have it. This is for December 9 to January 8. I'm actually perfectly fine signing um, the warrant as is. Um, so I'll make a motion that we do that. But I'm also, if, if <coughs> Phil or Chris, you feel strongly that we should not pay this one particular line item in the warrant. I'm also fine with that. I'm fairly positive we're going to, this, this is money that's already been not spent, but you know what I mean. It's already been, been used, yeah. so I don't want to 
have a late fee, so I'll second your motion. Do you feel that we need to talk about this more, though? Okay. And abstaining? No, I'm voting no. Okay. Um, and, um, <laughs> um, but, yeah. Aye. So, so Aye. all in favor? Aye. All opposed? <laughs> Me? Um, it's two to one. Meetings attended by select board members. Uh, capital improvements prior to this meeting. Erica? Um, I was at the uh, IT and Senate response meeting on Thursday, I think, Wednesday, Thursday, I can't remember. <clears throat> All right, I had a school committee and uh, which I missed most of. Um, what else? It seems like there's a lot of meetings. Um, Bernie, who did you who did you know have a meeting with? Right, um, public comments. Anybody? I'm here for the board of health budget. Ah, uh, I thought you were here to talk about your 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 uh, interior decoration. Your interior. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to go there. Well, so we just, it got, it got paid in the warrant, so I thought you were here to answer questions about that. I don't want to go there. You're not happy with it? Considering circumstances of the previous week, no, it was just too soon. And my I think you're talking about different that things. That yeah. You're saying that something just got paid for. The interior. The wall. The interior. Your interior. The wall, you're right? referring to the practical joke. No, oh, no, 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 he's referring to the game. Your actual, your actual interior, it yeah. was on the warrant today for payment for your, and for your carpet. dividers and your oh, carpet. The, oh, yeah. the, really, those should have been paid a long time ago, but okay. <laughs> the ways of the town move with deliberation. Yeah. So I thought that's why I you thought, were No, no, I thought you were referring to the interior decorating that happened over the weekend. That's what you don't want me to see. I didn't go there. You did, just for the record. Just, okay. Um, all right. So, do, do you want? Are, are we waiting for Russ? No. Okay. No, we can go ahead. All right. So the first item um, on new business. If it's okay to switch it around, since uh, since the assessors are here, or two of them. Discuss an impossible vote on program outline for the senior and veterans work off program, which, as you know, was approved by special town meeting in December. Remember grammar school, and we ask you to take one and pass them along. There are four sets there. I'll get another one ready for you, Erica. Thank you. <laughs> When you get to the crisscross one, they're there. Just oh, I see what you're doing. I yep. see what you're doing. You get the ah. packets to pass around. Right? Yes. I get it. Yes. You did, These... not, you did not print out the Sunderland one. No, I didn't. I didn't, but I had a great talk with them huh? today. Yeah, with Cindy. So uh, we have a lot of information and help and support and offers of, hey, you can up with any questions, give me a call from these other towns. Um, now, a week or so ago, I sent along some information um, about the other towns that I have looked at briefly and how they work with this. And today I printed out Greenfield and uh, Amherst applications and what goes out to the individual. And each uh, offered to help with our application too if we wanted it or we could um, work from theirs. But they're very complete. Sunderland um, uses the standard hiring application for any employee because they feel that that covers everything that is needed. So different towns do handle it differently. 
but these give us some uh, suggestions to include in our application process. Sunderland has also capped the amount to be owned at five hundred uh, to be earned at five hundred dollars, which is uh, thirty two hours of work at fifteen dollars. And they felt that was they've had a hard time filling thirty two hours, actually. Uh, the number of applicants and the number of jobs don't always match up, but they recommend that we find as many jobs as we can. It can be anything that a department decides they would like someone to help with. And uh, you can see on the one of the applications, it asks people to list their work off skills, what they might bring. Food service, do they have a uh, safe serve maybe, for example. And if so, they possibly could at help at the school if there was a, a need there, even just once in a while. Customer service, computer and tech. Um, we could add categories to that. Do you, are you willing to work outdoors? So all of these bring good ideas to what we could include in our application. I haven't started working one up yet, thinking I'd like to ask you to look it over and say what you think is good, bad, or indifferent and ideas that you think we should add to it. Now this is a program that's really in the select board's uh, bucket of jobs. Yep. So... Lovely bucket it is. <laughs> you know, we're working together on this, but... Um, so I do have some you, thoughts. You guys are in the lead. So I have some thoughts, if Chris, if, if, if it... If, I don't know. So, um, I kind of I kind of like the bits and pieces of several of what I read. Yeah. Um, I I like the way uh, uh, Sunderland had it set up in terms of the administration of it, mm -hmm. the partnership between the um, town administrator and the mm -hmm. the, assess the assessors, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, especially in lieu of the change that's coming in, uh, with the administrative assessor position, if that's still what mm -hmm. we're going to be calling it in the future. Um, but um, Might not have that name because this person won't be an assessor. But, right. But, yeah. So, um, but considering that that's going to be the full-time person in the building and that that person is going to be presumably new to the town, mm -hmm. um, um, it seems like it would be particularly useful given the changing format of the assessor board, et cetera, and the employee that the town administrator yeah. take the lead like it like in Sunderland. Mm -hmm. um, our, our board isn't changing, but right. that's exactly how it's done in Sunderland, yes. And what, what I'd like to see, what, as I recall this, you had identified earlier, at least as to next year or next fiscal year. Yes, fiscal 25. An, an, an amount that you, that could be set aside for this program in terms of the amount to be worked off. Yes. And um, so that's a little bit different than what I've seen from the, all these applications had an amount of applicants um, and not really, and wasn't focused on the side from like the point of view of the town about the right. amount of money. Right. So, so I like the idea of having something that says, you know, um, amount per person can will never exceed one thousand dollars in a given year, for instance. Mm -hmm. But that if there's more applicants, yes, then the amount divided by the number of applicants, mm -hmm. then um, that amount would be lower, so that we could uh, the the amount that each applicant could work off would be lower, so that we can spread the benefits to more people. Um, does that make sense? Is I understand that, what you're asking. Um, or is that unnecessarily complicated? <laughs> Phil speak. Right. <laughs> yeah. Some of the other towns, instead of using that approach of taking the pie and dividing it among everybody who applies, yes. has a lottery system to limit the number of applicants fairly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And from what I understand, if we do the income limitation, yes, um, that's a, a that, required part of the program. That then um, 
uh, which I'll just say that to me, that's what I really like. You know, to, to, I've, I've always tried to keep in mind that economic socio diversity of the town, mm -hmm. and I've tried to do what I can to keep that bit of diversity in our town, mm -hmm. what little of it we have. Um, and so I like this program for that reason. Yes. Uh, among many others, but right. for that reason in particular. Yes, there's a clear figure that uh, states what can be the, I believe it's the whole household income. Right. I'll double check, but yeah. Right. And so, um, but my understanding is that the actual number of people that could qualify for this program based on the income limitations might be smaller than what we, than what I think. Um, that's my that's I'm sure information that, that was given to me. Right, I'm sure that you and I both have heard from a number of people who would like to participate in the program. Right. Yes. And we won't know until the um, application, or I put out information about it in the Currents article. Right. But uh, we won't know until we have some jobs to offer and put it out there. So, yeah. Um, you know, so so I mean, I guess that would be that to set it up so that um, if if all of the applicants could um, could be accepted with a maximum amount earned of a thousand dollars, and if there's money left over, then there's money left over. Then, mm -hmm. Although that's not to quite it would carry it would it's in the overlay, so it would carry forward. Okay, that's what that was. It could question. yes, mm -hmm. um, and if there's more applicants, then would be eligible for a thousand dollars then we would adjust the maximum amount downwards on any given year we did not have to vote a particular amount for this program did we not that i recall no so i believe that it the possibility may exist to increase how much is used in this program should there be a very strong response and it's been a gentle year on the abatement end of things, so there could easily be a little extra bit. But that's part we want to make sure that the town, that, that it's structured so that the town has the flexibility. Yes. Good years, bad, you know, good years, not so good years. Yeah. Years of yep. 20, years of starvation. Um, well, we had initially spoken of, what, $7,000? I don't remember the exact number. I think so. At $1,000 each, that would be seven jobs. If it was 500, like Sunderland, it would be 14 jobs. Uh, that's for your board to determine. What's the issue? What if you get 30 applicants? Then you have a lottery. Then you have yes. a lottery. Yeah, yes. that, that it shouldn't, that, because um, if you're not, $500, was sort of like I saw that was the minimum of all maximums that yes, I've read. Yes, yes, um, it is. Uh, all the ones I've seen and, too. And and you sort of need something like that to entice. Yeah, I mean, what's the point otherwise? It's, right. So, and I mean, if each if each person needs to be trained, that puts a lot on the employees that have to train them. Yes, there's multiple, right? Well, and yeah, only train them for a small period of time worth of work yes yeah I mean and all the and so the all the other things that were you know, I forget which one that had a lot of the cautionary things in there about can't work for a family member that's whatever that's a department head can't that's work right. for um, what were some of the other ones I forget but there was like a, a paragraph yep. full of those yep. can't do things to right um, yeah um, and it's good to have them right up front Right. I think. Yep. Right. So the first, one of the first questions or efforts, I think, is to contact every department and ask what they might have that someone in this coming in in this type of capacity could do. Is there indoor work, outdoor work, paperwork? Yard work? I don't know what. And not just department and encourage heads, them. But committees as well, right? Yes. I yes. Mean, like, like I know, uh, I know. Uh, yes. I know open space committee and the pollinator Conway group 
um, needs hole diggers. But I'm a, I'm, I'm how's a, that? Would that go over if these people, if these people were paid? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Those are volunteer committees, and these people would be paid. Right. This is true. Is that a good match? Um, Again, for your board to determine. What's the concern? The feeling between those who are being paid and those who are volunteering their time to do the same work. Yeah, I can see that. The, uh, the possibility of that. I know we have a lot of great people here, and it. But you'd hate to see anything like that come up. But that's, yeah, it, that like idea that. has just come forward, so it needs yeah, more yeah, thinking. Yeah. Oh, that is. It needs more thinking before it's decided, yeah. Okay. Yet mm -hmm. there are other committees who have sometimes part-time employees to do clerical work. Yes. Right? Yes. That would seem pretty fair game. Yep, especially with any mailings or anything like that. We certainly will be able to find jobs for a few, you know, a couple of people with mailing type of uh, situations. Trying to see if, if we don't include committees, then Council of Aging would not be able to get volunteer help. It looks like that's not volunteer help; it's paid help. Well, it's paid help. Yeah, but yeah, that they, so, would all, that they would all qualify for. Yeah, you know, so, so no, yeah. isn't it? Probably a <laughs> but, number of people. But they who, would want, they want help. Yeah, so it's, interesting. it's interesting. What kind of, I mean, what kind of help do they want? So far, all these say department. Oh. Yes. It's okay, on your door, please. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, all right, so we gotta think about that. Yeah, these all say department. By like help, I mean, you know, changing smoke batteries, people have you know, things like that, smoke detector battery. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. um, house little mm -hmm. help with household yep. would stuff. The, would the planning board have any filing or anything like that that someone could do? The only, um, not filing so much, but planning board, before my time on the board had Hired help to do administrative things like mm -hmm. taking minutes and, and preparing agendas and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, sending out mailings, which there isn't such a person at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that position is just kind of sitting fallow. So theoretically, if you had someone with those kinds of office clerical skills, right. the planning board could So that's a benefit. board that yeah. could benefit and it would be... Because that's a, that's a hired position. Yes. It's not like a board member mm -hmm. uh, would be somehow supplemented. Yep. All right. So I guess I leave this with you. Um, uh, and keep us posted as to how you'd like to proceed. Um, I can get some more applications and overviews from other towns if you'd like to see them. This is really the meat of it. Yeah, well, maybe meet again in a couple of weeks, two, three weeks or something, and go over. Know, needs to be in this setting. Or, sure. It's probably best if it is, but. Um. So the theory is that the, the board, of, so the select board, would establish the parameters of the program, right? And then somehow between the assessors and and um, Veronique and Adam, the, the administration of the program would happen. Yes, right. and then it's the approved timesheet is sent to is sent to Jan, of course, for a payment, but we get a copy of it in order to uh, apply it against the overlay. Right. Yeah, that's where our part comes in, really, at the last possible step. You wouldn't need to do an abatement summary and certification and pass that on to Jan and Mike? Uh, there is a, a summary of some kind to do, yes. But our end is the abatement process, basically. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I 
still waiting on third? Yep. Yeah. All right. We will get All right. We'll just knock off a few. Go through a few. Um, so discussion on vote on vote on having Best Golden Hills rejoin the town as a town committee. Just to let you all know the Festival of the Hills organization did meet and did vote and has formally asked that they become, that was what we were waiting for before we voted on it last week. So now they have asked to become a town committee. Um, I, uh, I've been thinking about this when it came up last week. Um, I remember John John's suggestion about creating a placeholder in the budget because it it looks like they won't be making a specific budget request this year but that sound in in retrospect there's a lot of good reasons for doing that that way um, um, but you know so so this would be a vote on creating a creating a warrant article because it has to be voted on at town meeting um, just once and um, and creating the festival the hills scholarship committee and setting that up so that we can then appoint the four uh, the four recipients plus the superintendent of schools and or his designee um, so that's what that that's what this vote would be so i move that we um put a warrant article on the next um town warrant to make the Festival of the Hills Scholarship Committee an official town committee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Um, uh, discussion and possible vote on the need for sandbags. Um, so, bags. yeah, so um, when we did get, we had, we, we had made request from MEMA for sandbags shortly after the last December rainstorm, the last that was another almost six inches of rain in 12 hours, um, and they did actually Deer uh, Greenfield Fire Department, who was given I forget 1,500 sandbags, decided that they could that they could spare 75, and we have 75 empty sandbags um, they are in a secure location now oh, that the public cannot access Makes a lot of fun, um, right? uh, but they require they require uh, manual labor to fill the sandbags and make use of them so the idea is to um, put something in the economy currents and on the website asking residents if they want some sandbags and maybe capping the amount that each resident could get um, but that's up to I don't know. But right, that's if you cap the I'm just gonna say if you cap the amount they're useless. <laughs> this is true. But if there's more people that want them and, yeah. and one person has 75 and nobody else can get them, then that's not good either. That's true. <laughs> because uh, you know some of us got their eyes on them. Yeah. And we've been waiting for a policy before we can snag a few of them. So. Um, I would say a minimum people probably need a minimum 15 to do anything, right? Probably. That may that's about they 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 can they can hold 15 pounds. Yeah. So so the bag says right. it's like it's a small bag. Yeah. Um, um so that's a 15:30. So that yeah, that sounds about right. You can get 15? Yeah. All right. So that would be the motion put something in the current and on the town website saying sandbags available to residents. Uh, maximum, maximum 15. 15. And you have to fill them yourself, must, right? Must fill them yourself. <laughs> must, yeah. must call them. <laughs> and you have to call in advance because um, unless we get them and bring them to the town administrator's office to sit in the corner there, um, I don't know how much the town administrator would appreciate looking at a pile of empty sandbags all that time. But, um, looks up here. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, is that a but, yeah, yeah. I mean, they could just call Adam as well. Yeah. I'll second. So that's a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, 
you three, you wish to proceed? Yes. Okay. I make a motion to call these finance committee meetings in order. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Carries 3-0. Great. And you want to make a motion to approve the minutes from? I make, I make a motion to approve the meeting, meeting minutes from last Monday evening's meeting. February 5th. February 5th. Yeah. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. okay. Motion carries. So we have transfer station and board of health. Yes, yeah, since you're Lori's here, you yeah, it doesn't help for second. Oh, you want to go too? I'm board of health. Oh, you're board of health. I'm doing the board of health. Yeah. Oh wow. I like work for them. I'm the one that did all the budget. So. All right. Don't come up here so you can be heard yeah. with the microphone, Lori. Um, or else just speak louder. No, I don't want to. Okay. So did you want to go through it or do you want me to just go through it? By? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you got the mouse. Go for it. Okay. Um, okay. So um, the only difference in the salaries is um, you can see here in FY23, it was double what it was in FY24. That's because Lori's hours were split and we had sort of double um, budgeted. So we took it down, but this year, She's going to be going back up to 15 hours, so we had to increase it back up to where it was um, for the clerical. So those are the only differences there. The rest are level funded. Pretty much. Has the uh, FERCOG actually made their final? Uh, their, their they have. I can show that oh. to you real quick if you want. I hadn't seen that. I sent it to you. I sent the link. Remember? You said thanks. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I said thanks, and then I didn't look at it yet. <laughs> I mean, do you want to look at it real quick? Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, because, I mean, that was a placeholder. And it's correct. Right. I so checked it today. Oh, it so, um, yes. 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 So, <laughs> right. So, here's. Yeah, good guess. Oops. All right. Here's the assessments for FY25. Um, so, this is regulatory and statutory. But uh, this is the one that the Board of Health has to pay, SCP um, Health Services. So, and I just want to show you while we're here. The FCC inspection program, that's? That's the building inspectors and all I gotcha. that. I mm gotcha. -hmm. Yeah. Franklin, okay, Franklin County Cooperative. Yeah, and then highway. So this has gone down quite a bit, um, but we were expecting it to because the flip side is we've taken out the 33552 for accounting mm -hmm. and are putting that into another. So, and not, you know, to be transparent, it's not like it's not going somewhere. Mm -hmm. But so that was the budget last year, and that's the right. request this year. Okay. And I'd like to leave it right now. I, I can see it still says the 11,511 for mm -hmm. FY. Oh, yeah, FY24. I want to leave it at the 12 because we may need to add on that Title V, and we're not sure whether it'll make it go up or down or stay the same. So I don't want to take it down to the 11.5 and then find out that it's going to kick it back up to the 12. Sure. I'd like that little buffer just in case. Yeah. Okay. The same thing, I mean, there's a couple of categories in there that mileage. I mean. Yes, you have a, you've always had a problem with the vector-borne disease, but that is the rabies testing. And you can see in mileage? Mileage is rabies testing? Oh, the mileage. No, you said a couple. I didn't hear the mileage. Oh. But that's one that you question on a regular basis is the vector-borne. Mileage, they don't. I have a reputation. You have a reputation. Yes. They don't use the mileage because they're real. They don't. They should because they go to meetings out of town and they go to trainings out of town. But they don't so claim it. They just don't claim it. I'm, I have to keep reminding them that they can. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I know Kat just traveled for a MathCo meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. So it is something I need to remind them that they really should be doing. And the postage is going up for everybody, as we know. But, and dues as well. Dues, 150, 150. But we're still no, no, asking no, no, no. Oh, oh, you mean yeah. how much? Yeah, but before here it was 20. Yeah, exactly. That was back when we did all the inspections. Oh, actually, sorry, this was transfer station punch, it wasn't. Exactly. <laughs> Some of it was. Yeah. 
some of it was. Yeah. So I mean, if we're only going to be spending 150 on dues, that can that can seriously come down. I will mention it to them because I know that they've talked about other things. So I will, you know, if we drop it down to that 150. Well, then no, 500 would be fine, right? Probably. For two or 250 Erica said 250 I think it, it that limits them I mean right now that 150 is reflecting just the nacho membership so I think bringing it down to five would be doable but bringing it down to 250 might be not so much if they want to do anything else So I would say yes, that could come down to five. Okay, so that's level. We did for club level, level. The rest of it's level funded. Looks like a increase. It's only it, it the the amount that we just went over was eleven five one one, and Lori was saying she wanted. Keep it at 12 instead of 11511 because of the. This reflecting here is just, it hasn't, that's three quarters worth of payment. There's one quarter left to be paid on there. Yeah, anything ever really expended is never really. When you're looking at the full year, in the middle of the year. Yeah, middle of the year, 13. Yep. Something with the advertising budget, but nothing happens. Yeah. They didn't spend nothing advertising. So that's some of that money. Is there any required advertising for that? The advertising it's not program? something that happens often, but when we have situ, there are situations if there is um, code violations. Oh, okay. Or um, depending on, like, we have had a um, positive rabies in town, but because it, mm -hmm. it it was a wild animal and contained quickly, oh, okay. it depends. It's it's not something that is very often, as you can tell, it's not yeah. very often. Mm -hmm. But it's still a good thing to have in there. Yeah, of course. Just in case. I don't like to. I, I'd rather have a tiny bit extra and not have to come asking for it in the middle of the year because. Yeah. If it's an advertise, you probably put it in the Conway Current anyway. Yeah, but it would have to go in the recorder. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. newspaper. That would cost us money in the recorder. Exactly. It costs quite a bit. <laughs> these days. Can't make some type of news article, rabbit animal alert, and kind of <laughs> could be make, could make mass. Well, news. by the time the by the time the currents came out, let's say this happened on the seventeenth, then we wouldn't yeah. see it for six weeks yeah. later, and yeah. no, it's a little late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The distorted is more timely. It is. Yes, and and just you know, again, the vector-borne disease is for when we do find those rabbit animals that covers the testing being done by the vet and how much we spend just depends on how many animals she had to test for us that year. But it averages about $300 per animal. Yeah, yeah whether it be a bat or a wolf or whatever, it doesn't matter, it's the same. Straight up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any questions. So right. I try to keep my questions? No, no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you. Transfer station? Yeah. Great. So let's see, I'm going to hide this one only because that was four and a half here. And then we can make it a little bit bigger. All right. So um, at the moment, I've level funded for the um, transfer station attendance. Mm -hmm. And that includes because of the way the transfer station works and because our employees um, get some sick time, even if they take sick time, we have to have somebody else cover. So I have to have a little bit of a buffer in there because I'm paying 
three people instead of two on any given day that that's necessary. Um, and it does include the increased cost for a transfer station manager. Um, inspections, uh, I have to bump that up because, well, let me, let me actually start with this line right here because this is the one when it was in, you can see back when it was in the Board of Health budget, actually that's taken down, it was like 20 something um, when it was with Board of Health. Show us the year before. All right. <laughs> Uh, 22 7 and but they spent even more they spent 28 um, so I've been year over year trying to see what expenses actually need to come out of that line and see how I can take it down so you saw it was 18 which was taken down a little bit then I took it down to 10 now this year what I'm kind of doing I took it down to five but I've noticed that a lot of the stuff that's in there um, was paying for the, the um, sandy can up at the tran at the transfer station or pest controls and supplies and so I thought you know what supplies should be in a line of its own if we need trash bags if we need that stuff it's not a contracted service Correct. I should have a supply line mm -hmm. yep. so this is another year of I'm kind of guessing it might be over guessing but at least it's down three thousand if you look at the two and mm -hmm. five to seven instead of the ten so. Um, I mean, I'm willing to take it down more if you want. I just, I don't know what what it's going to look like. So, or I could just put a thousand for supplies. To be honest with you. I don't, know. I don't know how many trash bags we really need. You know. You know what? Let me do that. Lower is better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me put it down. Um, so I just wanted to explain that line before I went on. So. Inspections, um, there are three different kinds of inspections that happen at the transfer station. Um, two of them are annual and one is a biannual. So one is the wood waste transfer station inspection. Um, one is the um, OSHA inspection and one is the normal DEP transfer station inspection. And one inc includes well monitoring and all that. So. I hadn't quite teased that out. They probably put that in contracted services before too. So um, I don't know. Actually, looking at that, we we expended more that year and more this year. So I bumped it up to three because I don't think I think I only have two inspections in FY15 instead of the three. Um, the administration fee comes straight from the district, and they just give us how much it's going to be. Telephone never changes. And the same thing with all the rest of these, the trash hauling, the bulky waste, the recycling, the trash tipping, and the Murphy are all numbers that are given to me through, from Janamine of her estimates of how much it's gonna cost for us. Um, so, and I think I, I rounded them up just a little bit to make the numbers, you know. But as you can see here, hopefully this will start it's actually gone down a little bit, so I'm hoping that it'll go down even further next year, even as the cost goes up, which would be nice, because of the amount we're, we're saving. Hazardous waste collection was up at 7,500 when I took this over, and I brought it down to 4,500, and as you can see, it, I'm gonna leave it level funded only because I never know, but this includes pay, paying for, you know, Conway's a super site, where once a month people from the other towns can bring their things in, but it's also once a month where our people bring things in and we pay for it. So mm -hmm. that's part of what this comes out of. And then we also pay for the hazardous waste collection every September at GCC. Um, and there are a couple other things that I sort of put in there. Um, let's see. I bumped up the compost a little bit just because I haven't heard from them, but it wouldn't surprise me if they, we pay $510 a month for the service. Um, and I don't know if they're, they're going to give us a, a bump up. Oh, and scrap metal is another one that I get that number from Jan. And I took the uniforms down because the people we have right now have all have boots and coats and pretty much everything, so I think I can bring that down for this current year. Although we are going to need to hire somebody new, <laughs> so you know, um, but everybody should be in pretty good shape. So that's down. What is it? Uh, about 
six grand. So, yeah. yeah. So I have a question regarding the yeah. uh, salaries, hourly employees. This doesn't include a, uh, a pending uh, review of the compensation. What, what are they paid now? None of the salaries that you're seeing would include any kind of COLA because that hasn't been decided, and it certainly doesn't include any pay increases because none have been approved. Mm -hmm. yeah. So those those lines can change depending upon the, the select board, finance committee, personnel committee. Yeah. So that's what's the hourly wage now? The attendance you made? Fifteen. Fifteen for I know we're the lowest I think in the entire. Yeah. Working County Solid Waste Management District. I mean, I would love to see them get a bumped up, but you know, if we can yeah. talk about that at first now. Yeah. Um, how many are they working? I'm sorry? How many working there? Uh, well, <coughs> well, we have we're four people, and we had two on calls. We only have like, well, it's getting a little complicated because I'm going to have to report tonight that somebody's actually taken another job and will be going from a full time. Well, actually, it's going from an on-call to an on-call because I thought we were bumping him up to full-time and then he, he was recruited for another job, so he's going to stay as an on-call. So I'm missing a full-time position yeah. now. But what it is typically is you have two on for one week and then two on for the next week, so they rotate off. So it's four what we call full-time and then a, as many on-calls as we can because, you know, people go out sick and yeah. whatnot. Um, the other thing to remember, though, is if we have a setup that requires two on duty at any time, most yeah. towns um, our size and larger have a setup that only requires one on duty. But because of the layout of ours and where we're at, that's the way it is. Yeah. Um, so it's easier to pay more when it's just one person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any questions? No questions. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, I guess the only, the only thing that I would have to say is, um, what, what, we're anticipating saving over last year twenty thousand dollars. I thought. With the savings and with the increase in the um, sticker or the uh, decals, yes. So this doesn't cover the decals. Right? This, this doesn't expenses. cover this revenue. Expenses, right? Half of that's the decals, half of it's the same. All right. Okay. So yeah, the difference between revenue and expense. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, at least it's going down. <laughs> no, that is <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, and did anybody want to look at the fur thug again, or are we good with that? Yeah, always. Look, look at the fur thug one again. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> the. I, I do know that um, FERCA, FERCA had, to, had to give some of their per, uh, ARPA money. So FERCA did get ARPA money and they had to pass it through to the towns. So that has an overall impact in the FERCA budget. I don't quite know how it hmm. manifested itself, but they did have to give, they got a substantial amount of ARPA money. Hmm. For the purpose of spreading it to the towns? Oh, okay. And it's because they're not an actual county government. The, oh, yeah. the ones that are actual county government has got yeah. to spend that money, mm -hmm. but because they're not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, town government. Yep. Yeah. Flip side of that is that next year it's going to go up a lot. Because the ARPA won't be there. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty much level funded. Everything really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for the regulatory and stats went up a little bit. So, yeah. Okay. Even the Franklin County Cooperative Inspection Program is level funded. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's level funded. Yeah.
All right. Thank you. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn the plane. Second. All in favor? Sure. Continuing with our items, discussion and vote to confirm Jeff Terremont. <laughs> no, okay. How, has this changed? Has this changed? That's, that's one one change. Change. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so tell us what it should be. Well, Brian had been our, our on call, but he'd been filling in almost as a full time. And he and Jeff, and Jeff had been full time, but he's willing to, you know, so we, they were going to just switch their positions. But now Brian will be leaving us. Um, for another position. So I basically now have two on calls, but I need another full time person. May I ask where Brian's going? Um, he was recruited back to the grammar school. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So he's still in Conway. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he'll still fill in for us on weekends as needed, but he can't do the Wednesdays anymore. Got it. So. Um, so I'm, I was going to advertise in the currents. But we can still vote for Jeff to be on call. Um, you can still vote for him to be the on call because he was full time. Yeah. And for him to be on call, yes. And I believe. He, of what you sure sure. Okay. Thank you. Um. <coughs> what was I saying? Uh, uh, Jeff on call. Jeff on call. I think he. I think he's willing to work on Sundays. Okay. I do whatever. So, Any helps needed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I'll make a motion to confirm Jeff Claremont to become an on call TSA. A second. A uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Erica's nodding her head, approving. Sorry, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Unanimous. Yes. Um, uh, discussion and vote on departments to report to the select board on a regular basis. So we talked about this last week. Um, there are four departments that report directly to this, um, that, that are direct report to the select board the town administrator, the highway department, the police, and the fire. And transfer station. Transfer station. And transfer uh, station. Yeah. Um, which I would say is capably handled by the town administrator, um, but if others disagree, I don't know. Um, not, I mean, if others, if others want a direct meet them to come directly, or the department manager to come directly, Oh, uh, oh, for the transfer station manager. Yeah, that's what this is about. D departments to report to the select board, like at select board meetings. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know. I think it would be those would be brief, those would be quick meetings. Uh, but yeah. yeah, like I don't know how. I, I don't it know. might be easier if the board relayed things that they wanted for me, rather than require him to do. Yeah. Meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so okay. So then it's police, fire, highway. Fire is a level budget for ever more or less, and there's really nothing to talk about. I think um, police is similar to that. And I do note that in other towns, the police chief does make regular appearances before the the select board. And Deerfield is there every week, which surprises me when I watch those meetings. Um, but, um, <clears throat> yeah. so I, my, my thought is that, um, you know, police and fire probably don't have to be on kind of the same rotation schedule. But I think that if we're going to make this a policy for department heads, that, um, that it should be like they should be included like i don't want to single out one department and say that that's the only one that we want to hear from regularly so i would support for instance having the highway department um report to us monthly in person um and then you know highway and or i'm sorry um fire and police on a 
another staggered schedule with the option of basically providing a written report like Veronique does with her town administrator update every week. That's a good idea. I'm, I'm more or less fine with that. I, we just, you know, from speaking with town council, every other town that she has highway to reports month, uh, weekly or every other weekly. Um, and, you know, I, th I think the, the, the difference there is that not so much us telling him what to do. What it is is that his job, and I'll use the nomenclature that Chris might be most familiar with, um, it, his job is to think tactically about how to get a specific task done. Our job is to think strategically and, um, and to make sure that the tactical operations are in line with the strategic plans. And um, I think regular communications are a real good thing for that um, and that it would really help. Um, no, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think I just, my, my point is I don't want to, like, if we're going to have, like, everyone should be having these regular meetings and they don't have to be on the same schedule. So, yes, maybe we do meet with the highway department more often than we do with fire and police, but I do feel that they should also be on a regular schedule for consistency. Yep. Maybe we use Erica's idea of like the town administrator updates to have the department head updates for every meeting, um, or even weekly. Because um, I don't know how I feel about a department head meet. We, we there's a, a huge chunk of the year where we have meetings every other week. Right. Exactly. I don't know how I would feel about having a department head there for every single one of those meetings. Um, but the communication with an update, a written update, would be very nice. That's not the strength of. <laughs> that's not our. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think they would prefer a per in person update almost. I don't know. Um, well, I mean, give them the option. And um, I actually would prefer an in person update. I think right, it's you get. You, you, um, an actual give and take conversation is better than just reading a piece of paper or their thoughts on a piece of paper. And well, I mean, so what, if we, what if we give them the option we, um, and if there's, I mean, I, I, I think we'll be able to determine whether, you know, any given week that we've got someone on the schedule, we'll have an idea whether we want that person there in person or whether a written report is going to suffice. Yeah, I'm, I know I would prefer the highway, the in-person ops. It, the, the written report, you're, the, if the goal is to coordinate the tactical with the strategic, written being, just in being in passively in receipt of written reports does not advance that goal, in my opinion. A, con no, a, I, a conversation yeah. no, does. I, I, a conversation yeah, does. I, I totally agree. But I guess my point is that, like, we should have the discretion to say this is a week that you know that 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 will accept a written report basically oh i agree with that but i just wanted to ask because um when i took the job there were no specific guidelines for what should be in my town administrator update um so hopefully i've been presenting information to you in a way that you know, it's what you need to hear when you need to hear it. But if you have any particular guidelines, I think it would be helpful for, um, you know, if there's going to be something on paper. Yeah, I was going to suggest that they, whether it's on paper or whether it's just kind of like the format of what that update looks like in person, that we have, that we provide a template to department heads. Like this is, you know, these are the questions we're going to have. These are the things that we want you to report on. Yeah at this particular meeting, you know, like so for the highway department, like what roads did you work on this week? What Un roads are you working on next week, you know? Unanticipated spending. Right, yeah. Accidents. I, I, you know, to, to me, I think the, the thing about like a report that a work, a, a, a purpose generated work product for the, for a select board meeting, to me is like less, I, I would rather just read like, 
end of day work summaries that the that a department head spends five minutes at the end of the day just taking quick notes about what they did that day I would rather read five days of that than than, than a purpose built uh, than a purpose designed um, report that I think takes longer than five days of daily reports um, well, um, so that so that would be the template. I mean, that would yeah. be like we'd say, you know, we want to see, you know, take five minutes at the end of every day to make a note of what you did, and then bring yeah. that to us, you know, at this regularly scheduled like, meeting. To, to me, that's sort of like a fresh. You get fresh whatever. I think there's a bias when you're when you're doing like a purpose built product. There's a bias of recent whatever recency or whatever that you know, you, you tend to focus on on what you've done most recently because that's how the human memory. That's how my memory. I think that's how most yeah. people's memory works. Um, oh, I get that. And so, like, I, I always, that was how it used to be when I had to report one of these things. They wanted to see daily reports, and that would be your weekly report, your your daily reports. And then that's what you could talk about. And sort of. But you will also want to see at least an estimate of the week ahead. I know I know one of the difficulties is when weather comes in, it throws everything out the window, and you know, so you can be like, okay, I put down, I was hoping to get this to this next week, but. <laughs> um, and I guess just speaking to somebody who used to have to do this, and I did it for a year straight, and I had to write down everything I did every day, that's not five minutes. <laughs> so. Just to, just to put that out there, it's actually a lot more work than you think it is to write down what you did every day. Yeah, I mean, I guess my, my main point is whether we expect, you know, someone to, to have like a cumulative report that they're working on over the, you know, course of a month or a couple of weeks. I think that we should have some parameters and basically just provide some structure for what we want this, you know, update to look like. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> The way I see it, it should be the discussion of what's outside of business as usual. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know what somebody does every day. We, we're trusting in the department leads to manage their departments. When we lose that trust, that's an issue. I want to get be careful about, there's a very thin line I feel in this when we're looking at transparency and um, micromanagement right but so that that's the one side of that equation the other side is you have to be able to answer questions when residents ask you questions you have to have enough knowledge about what they're doing that you can answer the question of a resident that asks you about a specific thing that they're doing so like that's because we're the ones that are responsible for that yeah so like they're they, that is a fuzzy line, I would say, um, and it's up to, you know, I don't, that's what I would say about that. Um, well, do we, I mean, can we, can we vote on basically having a, bringing our department heads in on a regular schedule and we can wait to kind of see how that plays out and, and decide, you know, so just based on your suggestion, highway department monthly, police department quarterly, fire department semi-annually. That sounds reasonable. Town administrator every week. But we are, that's. Every meeting, thank you. Every meeting, thank you, yes, good point, good point. <laughs> Do we want to outline what we want though, right? I mean, if you're doing. Well, I mean, you know, like, I mean, that's it would be good to pro provide them with a template, but I think it's like, you know, what what were the, pri you know, basically, what did you do this week? What are you planning to do next week? Like you said, what are unexpected, um, you know, challenges? What are unexpected expenses? Um, what do you anticipate expenses coming up? Um, I mean, I, you know, just kind of the, the very basic information, I think. Yeah, I mean, part of it is that we are supposed to be evaluating the job performance of all of these individuals that report directly to us. Um, part of it is creating the criteria for doing that. So that, um, 
we've been negligent in that in that whole respect, I think. Um, which I suppose you can blame that on your leaguer chair. Um, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, we should be. I, I like the through. timeline you gave. All right, good. So, we good. want to at least move forward with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then in the first meeting with them, we can work out with them what it is we want these meetings to yeah. look like, maybe. Um, so, did we make a motion and a vote? Nope. All right, so move to have. The following departs, departments report to the select board on the following basis. Town administrator every meeting. Town highway department head every month. Town police chief quarterly. Town fire chief. Biannually? Semi, yeah, biann biannually the twice a year, yes. That's semi-annually. Yes, yeah, so biannually can be confusing as to twice a year or every two years. Yes, oh, got it. Yeah. Uh, so depending on. I will second Bill's motion. All right. <coughs> and, and, then, <clears throat> and 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 the first meeting, the first regular meeting that we have with each one of them, we'll discuss with them what we're looking for in this meeting and solicit their feedback as well. And just the transfer station will be included every. The transfer station every will will be still report. Yeah. Um, so that was do you have a start all date? Of, uh, starting it starting oh, sorry, now, I'm starting sooner the better um, now next week okay sorry I interrupted you no that's okay did we vote uh, uh, no, aye. Aye. <laughs> aye 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 it's unanimous Um, all right, discussion and vote on select board policy on reporting damages to town property, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this is one that there actually was a policy in the employee manual all along. So the word is that there used to be a form, but that is not in the employee manual. So I did create a form um, that Veronique did make it more proper like um, and so the suggestion here is that we send out the form um, that becomes part of the policy that's in the manual so that there is a, a, a record kept of everything that happens that they're not just verbal reports um, um, but also I would like to make one amendment to the form that was done and that is it, you know, the, the form says report these things immediately. Um, I think that that's unfair to, for people when incidents happen on weekends. So I would, I would substitute the word immediately with, with the words within 48 hours. Um, unless an injury occurs. Unless an injury occurs. I mean, but, but that's, yeah, the general, there was sort of like a general thing, and then there's in case there's an injury. But yeah. Well, okay. Um, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. I know exactly what you're saying, and, and I appreciate that. I'm just trying to figure out how that fits into. Well, there's property damage and personal right. damage, right? right? So we want yeah. the personal damage to be reported immediately and property damage within 48 hours. And it also definitely applies to like snow plowing. I do not want them to get off the snow plow to call and say I bumped into something. So the thing is, if it's a personal damage, so that's going to be excuse me covered by Maya, and there's a whole incident report for that separately anyway. You're talking about town property and equipment, so oh, 48 hours then. If we're only talking equipment, yeah, and property. What I can do is when this gets sent out, I can resend the reporting form for Maya so that they have mm -hmm. that as well. Does that make sense? Because personal, you want that, yeah. And you, you that know. includes if, say, somebody gets in an accident and harms someone that is not part of the town? Um, if it's with town vehicle, absolutely. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. should I change this because it's we're talking 
property and equipment to 48 hours? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, 48 hours from the time of the incident. So I'll just add at the end with it. So with that amendment, um, good. move to approve the new form, reporting form, to go. I apologize. What? I have to ask one more thing. Oh, sure. Stolen. What? So it has stolen on it. I threw that in there. Okay, Sorry, so that if it's was me. stolen, then that should be reported immediately to at least the police department, right? Yeah, that's true. I, I remember thinking that. Boy. That's an interesting little addition. Um, <laughs> well, uh, it lost or damaged, but if it's stolen, I mean, we can take it out if you want to just... Yeah, I mean, I, or just put another provision that stolen equipment should come with a police report, like report to the police immediately. I could put underneath that in parentheses, report stolen... Um, yeah, property well, immediately. Yeah, otherwise the insurance that's, carrier is that's, going to deny you any. That's especially true of things like tool, you know, we, the town, in order to do perform various departments, in order to perform their job, there's some expensive tools that yeah, and are fairly portable. And um, insurance doesn't cover if you don't have a police report. Yeah, so. As soon as that is done, if you could um, I just disseminate that to all department heads, like right away. Sure. And then um, the last of new business is oh, motion to approve that uh, form as an addition to the new policy to the existing policy, um, and to send it out to all department heads. In edited form. In edited with the two additions mentioned. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that's your notice. Okay. Um, discussion and vote on the letter from the select board outlining legislative priorities. So this was based on the conversation that you and I had. Like yeah, and I forgot to put the stamp letter in the packet to just have it be up. So. All right, so do you motion to the table? Table, table, table next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, we have a Comcast letter. Um, was this, were they going to come back? Or this was different? No, the, which utility is going to come back to be yelled at in a more proper form? Oh, I, I didn't. Oh, that's You're back again. Power. Um, yeah, the power. Yeah. The, uh, the uh, ne uh, not not Eversource, their National Grid. Nash yeah, they got a new. Yeah, they got a new yeah, person yeah, that was like, oh, yeah. let me know if you want to, if you want right. me to come in. It was like, yes, we want them to come in. We didn't get our pound of flesh last well, time. Well, we didn't, but then Danny went somewhere else, so I got yeah. an email, and then I responded, yes, and I I don't recall having heard back. Yeah. Again, I, I know they want to come in. Yeah. I think it was just um, a it was just a there's a number of residents up. on Bartles Ferry Road that have contacted me with concerns. Okay. And we do want them in and we do we can invite residents to participate in that discussion. Mm -hmm. Boy. Um uh, not enough, I should this too. Um, but I think they're connected with the rest. Um, um so this letter from Comcast would oh so yeah form five hundred sounds mildly dystopian form five hundred um, it didn't look particularly important but I thought I'd pass it on I can't this service interruption data duration of service interruption one two. I'm sorry, the whole town lost power for how long in July and how long in... Oh, this is strange. Do you want 
Did you not want me to do my TA update? I skipped over the TA update. <laughs> yes, please. I just I was just going through the things that were typed on the break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I was going to get to it. Okay. I didn't forget. Okay. Is that us agreeing that they only had one service interruption? Therefore, they don't have to refund monies to people that. That's basically what this is saying. And that they don't have to refund monies to people that unfortunately experienced many more service interruptions due to loss of power from flooding. 392. Wow, that's. I thought there'd be more. Um, no. Streaming is not. Is, is really, really hurting Comcast. So it appears, yes. The vast majority are less than one day. Billing delay up to three days for two. So the manner of resolution. Only one of those was resolved and that was the billing. Of course, the one thing Comcast was able to resolve was getting their money. <laughs> was there any, did we, was there a required response? No. no, that's just that, a, no. it's yeah. information. Well, we had to do something. <laughs> no, 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 it's information. Pack of lies. Um, all right, so town administrator update. Um, so I just wanted to talk with you about the first thing that I had on there about the grant because um, it was kind of hard to explain it <laughs> in writing. So we have the current grant. The normal progression for this would have been after this grant is finished. We will actually, while I was finishing, we would be applying for the next round of grants, which would be the permitting phase of whatever project is chosen. And then the following year would be the construction phase. Because this two-year grant, it was supposed to be a two-year grant, and it got compacted into one year. And we have to apply for the next year, the permitting phase, by May. And actually, we really need to start working on it in March, because that's when the RFR comes out because it takes a long time to do these. And there's no way that they're, the current grant, that they have the data. We haven't even had discussions. They haven't even come up with the five options yet for the town to then narrow down to two, which will then be going to design and permitting. And there's just no way time-wise for us to. So well, I remember having a meeting with you where we sat down with them. We discussed what the timeline would be since we found out that it was going to be compressed yeah. into one year. Yep. So who hasn't been complying with the time? It's line? not that they haven't been complying. I think that there's, I think it was wishful. Well, it's not that they haven't been complying. It's that they just can't get it done. They can get it done as a grant by June 30th. But the grant has to be applied for. You have to start it in March. So there's no way to, you can't start applying for something until you know the result of this grant. Until you know which two projects are going to be chosen by the town. So you, you can't start working on the grant application until those two have been chosen by the town. So there's no way to do, you see what I mean? It just doesn't it work. It smells like GZA to me. It's not. <laughs> okay. We just had a meeting and, and we all agreed, frankly, that it was just not going to really work to do that. The other kind of spanner in the works is that, not a spanner, but we have to do the MDP 2.0, which is that I don't know if you remember, I was going to apply for it last year as a pilot. The MVP 2.0 is a two-year, $50,000 grant that we really don't have any choice but to apply for if we wish to continue receiving MVP grants because our plan was from 2018 and it needs to be updated. And MVP is working very hard to um, help communities get community engagement as part of their process for tackling climate change. So the first year of this MVP 2.0, we're going to be hiring somebody who will help facilitate all this kind of discussions in town about what, what do people want to see. Then they're going to choose a seed project and then have a year to complete that. So that's a grant we kind of have to do if the board wishes to continue with MVP after, you know, so. We're kind of good at that, at having lunches and so, meetings. Yeah, no, I. I I but think it'll be a really, honestly, a great like process, and I'm hoping through that that we'll learn a lot about how to communicate everything, you know, like the process for getting community involvement about everything, not just about But if we're not going to be able to identify two 
uh, specific projects for this grant that we already got, that means we're going to have to be giving money back. No, 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 no. No, absolutely not. The grant that we're doing right now will be done, but it won't be done in time to apply for the permitting phase of it because we won't have chosen the two projects. Does that make sense? Yes, but that was my that was my apprehension. That was the whole basis of my apprehension because I went soon when you said we couldn't. So in other words, we'll have a year delay in in applying for the permitting part of this. Gotcha. <coughs> okay, I feel better. But okay, carry on. In the meantime, because MVP is this very interesting program that mixes a lot of stuff up and allows you to do different things. While we were all talk, I, I said, okay, well, if this is not going to work. What's floating up to the top is other ideas. So much work has been done. What do people want to apply for this coming year that we can work on now and get the application in? Because we've got a year before we can apply for the permitting phase of the current one. And I floated the idea of getting um, engineering, hydraulic engineering, for the whole situation up on Pine Hill, Upper Baptist, Emerson Hollow, going down to Shelburne Falls. And we've talked about you know stormwater management is what we're really interested in, right? And that would include a lot of education for residents about what they can actually do on their own properties to manage stormwater. During that discussion, because we also met Anna Sams, who's our new MVP coordinator. During that discussion, we said East Hampton had just done something really interesting to come up with a whole like booklet on residential stormwater management. So we can definitely like tie this all in. And then it was brought up that perhaps the DEP 319 grant would actually be a better fit for doing the hydraulic engineering. So we're going to be meeting with DEP and floating that idea with them because their grant application is coming up soon. And the FERPOG has done that before and they would basically just take the lead and apply for us for that grant. So, so how does that concept interface with the highway Plan, the highway stormwater management plan that for Cog already. Well, I gave everybody a copy of that report. <coughs> right. So that's what we're, as a matter of fact, that's going to DEP too as the basis for this. But in discussions with the board, it was my understanding was that getting a true hydraulic, hydraulic engineer expert to lay out because. In the FERCOG report, they didn't go into depth about what will happen down in Emerson Hollow and Shelburne Falls Road. And I think you have to take the whole picture into account. And that, honestly, I think we would want to have a hydraulic engineer, you know, like yeah, this is our no, lesson. No, I've been, I've been doing my own so. thing to try to get one to give us a quote based on that report and the additional work that yeah. would need to be done. But, so, um, so, well, hopefully, then we could get the DEP 319 grant to take care of that hydraulic engineering report, which would tell us what to do. And then we could do an MVP grant that would go hand in hand, that would be educational, that would help everybody learn how to do stormwater management, whether it's building swales or whether it's building rain gardens or whatever it is. And we might even be able to do a demonstration project on town property of, you know, building some kind of rain garden or something. So. Those are just ideas that are floating out there, and I wanted to see how the board felt about me going in that direction for, because this, this would be a lot of grants if we got them all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> but, oh, anything that can be done is by definition better than nothing. <laughs> um, I, you know, I would say that the, 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 big, the big thing in general, though, like I, for me and I know from the residents of that area is for the town to manage the water that goes on to town roads in such a way that once the water goes on to a town road, it does not thereafter go into someone's basement um, or wreck their yard, etc. That that is the kind of, and I don't know to what it, I mean, the project that you're talking about is larger and um, there are some residents that would have the financial wherewithal to do construction projects, drain, you know, stormwater construction projects on their land. There's many others that either don't have enough land to effectively do that or the resources to effectively do that or both. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, but anything is better than nothing. 
So is that a yes, go ahead? <laughs> I mean, especially with the DEP 319, I say yes. <laughs> and especially since, you know, a governor um, tax break to the rich, uh, um, with, uh, Healy uh, um, just announced the big increase in MVP grant funding. So I would think that that is going to be a good thing, although the way, the way that the tax break worked out where the wealthiest among us took far greater advantage of that than the state predicted, and then the state's prediction did not include the deductions that would go along with that for the wealthy, so that in general, that tax break was way more expensive than they forecast, and so sorry if you have mass health in this state, you got has to pay for that, made to pay for that. So, so the board approves of me going forward with these? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. And the only other thing too, I mean, you, you can see what's on there about the transfer station. Um, if there are other things that you want us to spend the RDP funds on, let me know. Transfer station improvements. I also see you say that though at the recycling revenue fund. And then there's some questions below about the decals I would like to answer for you. Oh, yeah, good. I want to talk about that, too. Yes. Well, none of these are in our policy so far. So these were questions that have come up during the process mm -hmm. that we need the board to create policy on for us. We, okay. we have spoken about them in the past, though. Um, I think so. And there, there are customs, you know, and <clears throat> like I'll just, you know, just some of these, it's been the longstanding custom that... Um, if you lose a decal, you gotta buy a new one. I remember, because I lost one. Like, okay, the same thing like when you switch cars. That's like the same exact thing. When you switch cars, you get a new car, or you get a different used car. Too bad, new decal. Um, that was always the policy. So, and I'll just speak historically here instead of like, you know, whatever. So, um, the, if you're a landowner, but not a residence owner or a homeowner, you get no sticker. Like that was always the policy. Um, that was, it was, I'm that, sorry, I didn't have that in writing anywhere. No, but none I, of these. I, yeah, yeah, I know. But, so uh, but I couldn't make I, that I, call I, while I you were selling decals. I understand. I understand that. But that was always that was always the policy. And I, you know, I I remember discussions about this years ago. Um, but you know, back when the stickers were still a dollar on the, on the windshield, and that was it. And but it was just like you know, sorry, if you're not uh, residents, if you don't own a residence, um, or reside, you don't have to own a residence. You just have to reside. If you don't reside in this town. You just own land. Um, why? Why would we get give? I'm sorry. What? If you just own land, why are you throwing trash away? Because it's so much cheaper to do that than wherever your residence okay. is. So the answer is no. <laughs> so, but I, I agree, but I need a written policy on yeah, this okay. so that when people come into the office and there's also... So the lost decals, can we start there? Sure. Do they mean just the decal or also the stick? Did they somehow lose stickers Somebody's well? also lost the entire envelope of stickers. Lost the entire envelope. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> the entire envelope. Well, you know, yeah, sorry. Don't do that. So... Yes, we Would have you? been we have been charging. Uh, I think we've been charging for the lost decals. It's been kind of you know, the thing that kind of surprised me was how many people lost their decals. Right. And I started to get a little bit suspicious. Just as well, you should. Yeah. So this is why you know. Well, what do we do? Do we charge a whole other twenty? Do if we charge a five because it was the second? So these are things that charge I, the per sticker price. Yes, that's it. Well, I mean, I didn't necessarily, we didn't have this on the agenda. I just wanted to bring these to light. But if you, you know, I'd like to have a written policy for when we go into. So, yeah, this is like, it's just the next. People should need to treat this like it's their birth certificate, driver's license, or passport. Uh, like, you don't, you do not lose these things. So, if they lose all the, the this decal, just the decal, they just want a decal replacement, I would say, like, what, how much does it cost? Two dollars? Five dollars at most? That's it for the same vehicle. Right. How do you lose that? But if they're asking for stickers also, then... No, no, no. No, nobody's asked for the stickers. This okay. is all just the car <coughs> decals. And a lot of them went missing this year. So is somebody coming in? And I'm not saying they are, but it was like, wow, a lot of missing. Hmm. 
I only have to pay five bucks to get an extra one too. Because after two or three months, there's some people that are realizing, wow, I really, I really go through a lot of trash. Like I create but they don't, a lot. No, of they don't. They don't get the extra stickers. We won't give bag stickers for right. Right. anything less than twenty bucks. It's just the lost decal itself, and so many, you know. And then the car so, gets sold, and they, you know. So. Well, I mean, if if you if people that have needed their front windshield replaced, and that happens more and more. Mm -hmm. um, as people get like tires that are fancier and kick up rocks more and everything but you know you should be able to s scrape off the old one and come in with it and get into it. like you should but if you forgot to if you bring in the old one it's free yeah that's if yeah. you don't it's five dollars how about that there you go well so I think we should because there's some other policies too but if you want yeah. to put this on maybe for next week for you yeah, guys the same to thing though, on. If the, it's always been yeah. if, you have, if you have a home business you know, you only that too bad. Um, yeah, get two two things then. Yeah, um, and, yeah. Um, and no, the, that's fine. They wanted that was the thing they wanted. And the pro, yeah, the prorated thing also like maybe a half a year, but they also get half the stickers. But I want to do any more than that, you know. Um, if I, I guess it's different. Well, what I mean, I. What what constitutes a, a, a what constitutes a home business? Because I can see, I mean, right. I, I think there are probably a lot of home businesses in Conway that don't have commercial business licenses. Right. Um, well, and that it's actually not legally required to have a commercial business license, but um, yeah, like, I just I mean, like if I, I mean I could like I have a home business. Right. Like if if I said that, yeah. would I, I mean, like what proof do we have to? I, well, I mean, let's talk about this next week. Yeah, okay. true, but I just want to bring right. up this question to you first, Erica. What if that home business is Airbnb? Right, there you go. Right, yeah. All right, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it next week. Erica's right. Um, <laughs> um, next meeting. February 20th, 5.30 for an executive session. I don't think we're doing that yet. Maybe we might not be doing that. On, what was the date? Oh, the 20th? Or the... So it's 6 o'clock, regular? Okay. That particular topic is a TBD. Tuesday the 20th and my understanding is that is that the one that's going to be up no 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 it's here that's fine okay all right yeah because it's not super Tuesday it's, it's super March, Tuesday March, it'll, be it'll be upstairs gotcha all right um motion to adjourn second all in favor aye aye all right all right see, see you on next see you the 20th yeah uh, Tuesday the 20th